This is problem number five from chapter six. And even though it's a one dot problem, it, I think that a lot of students kind of get tripped up because there's not that much information given and it feels a little bit daunting. So, hey, let's read it and figure it out. So the floor of a railroad flat car is loaded with loose crates having a coefficient of static friction of 0.25 with the floor. If the train is initially moving at a speed of 48 kilometers per hour and how short a distance can the train be stopped at a constant acceleration without causing the crates to slide over the floor. So we are clearly dealing with friction here. And so a really good choice is to start with a free body diagram. So here is my crate that's just sitting on the floor of this flat car. And so my crate has a normal force. My crate has a weight. And then my crate has friction. Let's think about what direction friction is going. So let's say that my speed is in this direction. So my velocity is going that way. If I am now going to try to stop, well, first of all, don't forget this. If I am decreasing speed, which is what we're doing, then velocity and acceleration are going to be in opposite directions. And so my acceleration, that's an awesome arrow. Okay. My acceleration is going to be going in the opposite direction of my velocity. And you could have chosen to have your velocity go that way and your acceleration go that way. It doesn't matter. This is what I chose, so I'm going to go with it. So if this is the case, then imagine that you're moving in this direction. Your crate wants to keep moving in that direction because of inertia. And so if you are stopping, then friction is going to be opposing that, that movement. So the friction will be pushing in the opposite direction of where that crate wants to keep going to. So my friction is in this direction. I'm gonna write static friction so that we remember it's static. The other indication is that my force, this is the only force in the X direction. And since my acceleration is in this direction, since F equals MA, that indicates to us that our force, or some of our forces and our acceleration must be going in the same direction. So this kind of, hopefully intuitively, you figured out friction goes that way. And because of F equals MA mathematically, Friction must go in that direction. So thank you. All right, let's sum our forces. So sum of the forces in the X direction equals mass times acceleration. And so uh, the sum of the forces, the only force we have, and I'm gonna have that be my positive direction so that my force can be in that way and my acceleration can be that way so we don't have to have a negative and a negative. So my only force is static friction. I have my mass which we don't know, but whatever, let's just keep going. And then our acceleration, which we also don't know. Great, so we don't know anything, but we do know that friction is fun. So F equals mu Fn. And I also know that in this case, my normal force is going to be equal to my weight, which is mg. So my static friction equals mu static times mg. So at this point, you might have no idea how you're going to get to the end of this problem. But a really good strategy is just to work through what you know. And then eventually, you will hopefully come up to something that makes some more sense. So I'm going to plug this in over here. So mu s times mg equals mass acceleration. Cool. So this and by the way, the reason why I would think to do this in the first place is because we know what the coefficient of static friction is. So pretty clear that we're going to have to use that somewhere. And this is where it makes the most sense to me. And so now we see that our mass cancels out. Hooray for us. We know the coefficient of static friction. We know gravity and therefore we can solve for acceleration. How exciting. So we have 0.25 times 9.8 equals our acceleration, which tells me then my acceleration is 2.45 meters per second squared. Now that would be awesome if the question said, hey, what's your acceleration? But it doesn't. It says, how short a distance can the train be stopped at constant acceleration without causing the crates to slide? So we already dealt with the fact that we are not causing the crates to slide. This is the acceleration that's possible to cause no crates to slide because we were using our coefficient of static friction. So this is the most the acceleration can be with no sliding. But the other big clue in this problem right here 
is that it says constant acceleration. Whenever you see that, you should have flashbacks of chapter two, three, and four, where we learned kinematics. Because if I have a constant acceleration, then I can use any one of these equations. And so let's think about what we know. We know our acceleration right here. We know our initial velocity. Velocity initial equals 48 kilometers per hour, which we will have to convert, but at least we know it. We know our final velocity. That's going to be zero because we're going to stop it. And I want to know my change in distance. And so with all of this, we can look at our possible equations. This one is not useful because I don't have any distance in here, which is what we're trying to solve for. These two are more useful because I do have that, but this one has time. And we don't know time, so let's not deal with that. Let's use this third equation right here. But of course, before we do, let's convert this into meters and seconds. So I'll do some quick unit conversion. So kilometers, meters, hour, seconds. So I have a thousand meters in every one kilometer. I have one hour for every 3,600 seconds, which finds out that our initial velocity is 13.3 meters per second. Great. So I have acceleration, initial velocity, final velocity. I want to know this. So I will use this equation and just plug it in right below. So zero equals 13.3 squared plus two times my acceleration. Keep in mind, my velocity is this way. So that is my positive direction. Now this is going to be my positive. Therefore, my acceleration in that direction will be a negative. So I will have negative 2.45 times the change in my x position. And so if I solve this, I will find out that the change in my position is 36.3 meters. Bum, bum, bum. So that is how short a distance my train can be stopped at this constant acceleration. And we're done.